Hello and a warm welcome to all on our special program Current Affairs. Recently, National Statistical Office that is NSO has released GDP data. According to it, India's GDP growth is reduced by 23.9% in the first quarter of the year 2020 in comparison to the first quarter of 2019. It is the biggest reduction since country started to make available data in the year 1996. Gross value added, that is GVA, growth rate also reduced by 22.8% in the first quarter of the year 2020. In GK Today's Current Affair Explainer Program series, we will discuss some important points like what are GDP and GVA. Secondly, we will also know what are important points in the data released. Thirdly, we will also know about why is GDP contracting, what would be the possible implications, and lastly, we will also know what may be the possible solutions to it. To begin with, let us first know what are GDP and GVA. GDP is used to measure the economic activities in a country. It is the total value of annual outputs of goods and services in a country. It provides the economic productivity for the consumer's side Whereas, GVA is the sum of GDP of a country and net of subsidies and taxes in that economy. Moving further, let us know what are important points in the data released. Construction, manufacturing, trade, hotels and other services and mining were the worst affected sectors. These sectors declined by 50.3%, 39.3%, 47.0% and 23% respectively. However, the agriculture sector reflected a positive growth at 3.4%. This indicates the first time suspension of economic activity in the first quarter of this fiscal year. This is due to the COVID-19 pandemic and many phases of the lockdowns. Moving further, let us know why is GDP contracting? Private consumption and demand generated by private sector businesses, government and exports are key factors for GDP growth in an economy. Unfortunately, private consumption has declined by 27%. Investment by private sector businesses has declined by 47%. The net export demand was slightly better in this first quarter because India's imports have fallen more than its exports. While on paper, this gives a boost to overall GDP, it also points to an economy where economic activity has plunged. The government's expenditure rose by 16%, but this was not enough to boost the demand. Moving further, let us know what would be the possible implications. In a scenario where job-providing sectors are contracting, people would either lose jobs or fail to get one. Moreover, the small-scale and informal sectors are more affected in comparison to the organized sector. However, it is not reflected in the quarterly GDP numbers. In the informal sector, factory output data are used to depict the trends in the growth. In the banking sector, there are worries regarding household debt and looming defaults. The reason behind it is income stagnation salary cuts and job losses, etc. Lastly, let us know what may be the possible solution. Decline in incomes of individual causes, reduction in consumption, resulting in reduction in investment. The same logic is applicable for exports and imports too. Therefore, only the government can revitalize the economy in the short, to medium term by spending more. The government can also accept the measures recommended by McKinsey Global Institute. According to this institute, an additional 3.5% of the GDP can be raised by the government by adopting global shift, higher productivity through privatization, improvement in infrastructure and efficient financing. 
global trends like digitization and automation, shifting supply chains, urbanization, and rising incomes and demographic shifts can be beneficial. Apart from that, a greater focus on sustainability, health, and safety can boost the post-pandemic economy. Privatization of approximately 30 larger state-owned enterprises can double their productivity. There is a need for India to unlock supply in land markets to lessen land costs by 20 to 25 percent. There is also need to enable efficient power distribution to lessen commercial and industrial tariffs by 20 to 25 percent and improve the ease and cut down the cost of doing business. Proper reallocation of fiscal resources can deliver $2.4 trillion in investment. It can also boost entrepreneurship by reducing the cost of capital for enterprises by about 3.5%.